Hello, my profitable PR pros. Hope you're having a wonderful day, wonderful week. It's been a great week around here. The kids are back in school, ah, back to school. Anyone with uh, kids that are school age knows that when they go back to school, you feel this huge burst of energy. Honestly, I feel like I can take over the world somehow. I have tons of energy. I know that I can accomplish so much in just six hours that they're at school. And also in all honesty, the schedule is really kicking my butt. Getting up, we're getting up like an hour and 45 minutes earlier than we did all summer. I woke up with a raging headache today that I still have, migraine headache, where it's like your whole body aches and you feel nauseous but we committed to showing up for you today. And today's topic is so good that I couldn't not show up for you. Um, and I have a little piece that I'm adding to this lesson today because of a call that I had earlier with one of the women inside my coaching program. And we got into, it ended up being a one-on-one -on -one call. We got into a lot about intuition and how important intuition is in running your business, especially at the beginning stages, and really recognizing that there are signs there for you. If you're open to receiving them, if you pay attention to feelings you have, directions you're pulled in, gut instincts on certain things, and you realize that that is telling you something about you and your business and your clients, then intuition can be an extremely powerful tool for you as you grow and scale your profitable agency. So we're gonna get into that. And I really wanna dive into leadership because I want to empower you to grow your business of your dreams, not the business that comes your way, but actually, here's the cat, actually, creating your ideal business on your terms. So that's what we're gonna talk about. My name's Jen Burson. If you don't know who I am, there's several new people in this community. Oh, don't cut me off, ah, cat. Um, so I realize not everybody may, you may have stumbled on me from an ad and decided to join our community. And I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful that you decided to do that. And I am the founder of Generation PR, which is a Los Angeles-based public relations and social media marketing agency. Our areas of expertise are in providing PR, social media marketing, and influencer marketing, and doing that for baby and kids, beauty and lifestyle brands, and health and wellness. And I'm a former attorney. I left law. And this is where intuition comes into play. It was responsible for my entire career transition. And I'll give you that quick story in a second so you can start to see how important that is for you and your business. Um, but I left law wanting a better career path for myself, wanting a better life that served me. This cat, I have a very old cat, you guys, Harley. He's like 15 years old and he's climbing all over the desk. All right, bye Harley. Um, so I had made this decision 15 years ago to leave law and start to run my own agency. And that has been one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. And now I'm running a business that doesn't run me. I'm working on my terms. I'm taking time to be with my children if they need me. Uh, signing up to be a room parent this year in their class because I know I have the flexibility to do that. Working with my dream clients clients I visualized and knew that I could do an incredible job for that I just felt would be the ideal clients on my client roster. And the next thing I know, they're knocking on my door, coming to me, and I give them my rate based on my expertise and they sign without any negotiation. That's what happens when you intentionally create a business where you become the expert in your field, you become the go-to for that specific area, and your dream clients come to you. So give me a thumbs up if that resonates or sounds good. Give me comments. I'm here. I can see you guys. Um, I would just really love to know kind of where you are in that thinking of being in charge of your business or being reactive in your business. One of the big areas where I see this when I coach women who are members of my program is that they get clients calling them. 
that say, I need this in my business. And my friend at a cocktail party told me I needed to PR my business. You always hear that PR as a verb, right? Which I don't know why it's like a huge pet peeve of mine. It's not a verb. Um, <laughs> but they say, you know, this is going to be the big thing I need in my business. And I want you to write six press releases over the course of a year. Um, and this is what I want in my business. Okay, cool. Seeing some thumbs up. Yeah, I know that that does resonate. But clients don't always know what they need. News alert, right? They call you and they say what they think they need. And a lot of times we'll respond and say, sounds great. Let me get you a proposal for that. But what I would challenge you to do is to step into your role as an expert, as an authority, and as a guide for them on these sales calls. Because I believe on the sales call, the discovery call process is when you should already be establishing your expertise. Instead of feeling like you have to say yes to everything they're asking for, really think through, you're not giving them strategy like in terms of something they can run and execute on their own, but give them enough guidance so that they see that they can trust you, you know your stuff, you're looking out for them. Clients don't always know what's best. And if you are constantly in reactive mode, uh, reactive mode, taking work that comes your way, and you also believe that every client that comes knocking on your door has the opportunity to work with you, um, which isn't true. Not everybody gets to work with you. Just because you provide a service and they're interested in your service, you're in charge. There are huge red flags that come up in sales calls where you can say to yourself, you know what? Kind of don't really want to take this work on. I can tell this guy's going to be a nightmare. I don't really think I want this work. So a lot of starting agency owners, they get into this like, well, I've got to have the client in order to have a business. Um, you know, I've got to have, uh, you know, this is somebody that's willing to pay me and I perform the service. So I'm just going to bid it out. And, you know, if they can pay me what I'm asking for, then let's do it. And I challenge you to be more strategic and more intentional with how you're growing your business. Not only how you react when you get new leads or if you have a friend that says, hey, you know, my cousin has a soap business and they want to, uh, you know, help with PR and you do PR, can you talk to them and, and help them? And now you feel obligated because it's your friend's cousin. But what ends up happening is you build a reactive business Everything you do in your business becomes stepping stones to bigger, better opportunities. So what you want more of, you need to be going down those paths because you're naturally gonna gain expertise, contacts, industry know-how in certain industries and certain things that you take on. So if that doesn't interest you and you don't wanna be doing that long-term, you need to take a stand for yourself and your business right away so that you're not going down these paths that you don't ultimately want to grow and scale your business in. You can be very intentional. And when you narrow your focus on your niche and your service offering, you really narrow down. I know that the kind of natural thought is that the more services you provide to the more types of clients, the more opportunities will come your way. But the reality and what successful, profitable agency owners know is that they need to develop and you need to develop a deep expertise in your niche that you want to be known for so that your dream clients will seek you out. They will pay you a premium for your services and work comes your way um, and it's easier to sell what you know how to do. And I'm not saying one niche like you have to say I am a nail polish PR person or I do you know children's educational products we do baby and kids beauty and cosmetics and health and wellness and what that we also have said lifestyle in the past which was kind of a catch-all category for things that interested me and now we've refined it down a bit to health and wellness um, and we have attracted billion dollar brands in those industries because they come to us for what we are known for. And you can put your rate out there that is a calculation of the value you provide to the client, not an hourly calculation, 
but a value-based calculation. And you are going to attract premium clients, higher caliber clients. When you're a generalist, nobody looks at you as the must-have authority in what you are providing. So think about that as you're building your business, that when you take these opportunities that come your way because it's a friend's cousin or because somebody emailed you and they're looking for PR and you provide PR services, okay, it's a match, not necessarily. And feel confident in saying no to opportunities that are not the right fit for you. Trust your instincts and trust your gut on what you want in your business. Because when you say no to things that aren't the right fit, you're keeping space and you're keeping bandwidth and time and energy resources for your ideal clients. And if you tie yourself up with small clients, discounting your services, or turning around and saying yes to every client that knocks on your door, because and for all of the services they they want. Well, I want influencer marketing, email marketing, copywriting, web design and development. Um, we need social media marketing strategy and execution. If you are doing all the things for all the clients, you will never get in a flow state. And this came up on my call today with my agency accelerator fast track member. We did a coaching call, and she was saying that in the beginning of our working together, that that flow state seemed like an impossible goal. And she said, it just seemed really hard to get there. And I didn't quite understand why I needed to get there and what that would look like because clients were starting at different times and they all wanted different things and they were in all different industries. And she said now that she understands that that flow state of narrowing down what clients you're working for and narrowing down the services you provide and having processes for how you run your business, she is now in that flow state. It was so awesome to hear. I was like, yes, like we got it, we got it. She's like, I get it now. I have, it's just frictionless. We're onboarding all these clients at once. I have no problem with the bandwidth. Everybody's just working so, it's just working so well. It's just flowing in my agency. And now I can proactively build the business that I want because we are flowing with our existing clients. That's what I wanna get you into. It starts with being intentional with who you work with, what areas you wanna focus on in terms of service offering and niches, and what um, you know types of clients you wanna work with, being really intentional, being your own advocate on your discovery calls, right? It's not reactive, like, let me please this person on the other, other end of the phone. I say things on discovery calls all the time that I'm like, I can't believe I'm saying this to this person, but like, they kind of need to hear it. They kind of need to hear that what they're looking for is not the right, the right thing for them. Um, and what I would actually recommend is X, Y, Z. And that the, like, we had a client that was like, I want you to set me up with a whole, you know, battery of desk side meetings in New York. And I was like, well, the kind of contacts that you're looking for, they're not sitting desk side at all of these magazines. These would be freelancers, right? Like we're gonna get you results, but a desk side press tour is not the answer for you. And I stepped into my role of the expert and I guided them in that way. And I said, this is not the right approach. Um, so really know that, that as you build your business, you are in the driver's seat, you can be intentional with how you grow your business, who you end up working with. And the other thing that may sound a little woo-woo, and I'm okay with that because I will tell you, when I embraced the woo-woo aspect of my business, my business skyrocketed. And that means to me, woo-woo is like trusting instincts, realizing there are signs happening for you. And when you notice them and acknowledge them, it's like an amazing tool that guides you in your business is this intuition. And I'll tell you my very first kind of uh, major piece of intuition that ended up shaping my whole career. When I was an attorney, I um, found a little fragrance when I was on my bar trip in Europe and it was this little fragrance called I Am Rich. It smelled amazing. It was more like an abundance of riches, not like physical money riches, but you were supposed to smell it and then be reminded of your you know, abundance in this world. And it smelled amazing and everybody always complimented me on it. And when I ran out of it, I contacted the company 
and I said, you know, I'd like to order more. And even though I found it in Europe, they were based in California. They had no presence here. No one had ever heard of them. They had no retail stores. Mind you, I'm still an attorney. And I had this huge pull to this company, huge pull. And I thought, I need to help them. I just need to help them. I feel like I could get them in stores. I feel like I could tell magazines about them. I feel like I could get it to celebrities and maybe they would use it and it might get them more recognition. But I'm gonna reach out to this owner of this company and I'm gonna just tell her that I wanna help her. This lawyer, civil litigation attorney, is reaching out and I said, send me a huge box of products, free products, psycho weirdo on the internet, sure, send me products and I will get it out there and I would just love to help you because I love your brand. It was this major pull in my life and you know what? She did. She sent me a huge box of stuff and it literally like was the best, it, it opened my eyes and it woke me up. It woke me up to the fact that I was in the wrong profession. I was getting paid a ton of money to be a litigator. I worked so hard to get there. I was at a prestigious firm in Los Angeles and I wasn't happy. I had achieved my dream and I wasn't happy. And here I was working for free for, God, this cat, okay. I was working for free for a brand that I believed in. I got her one press mention in a weekly magazine, a Celebrity Weekly. It had a huge impact on her business. She had retail stores calling her to carry the product. She sold out of the product in less than a week. She had more sales for her products since getting in um, In Touch Weekly Magazine than she ever had in the history of her business. So in the course of three weeks working for free, I was able to make such a positive impact on a company and build up a business that I believed in versus tearing down businesses through expensive litigation, working like crazy, and that woke me up. And I said, I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong profession. What am I doing? Why am I doing this? And I quit my job with no training, no contacts, no experience, nothing. And I said, I am starting my own PR agency. Once I realized what I was actually providing to this person, that was my big piece of intuition that pulled me. I had a feeling I need to talk to this woman. I feel like I can help her. I feel passionate about their business. And I just wrote a letter expressing my genuine interest in her company. And the next thing I knew, I was supporting her for free. Loved that work so much. I quit my job and I pursued it full time. And now I run an agency that supports billion dollar brands. We have $3 billion publicly traded companies. Um, you know, companies that are just my dream clients. And it completely shifted my entire career trajectory to something that I love that 14, almost 15 years later, I still love doing. And so one of the things I want you to think about is trusting that intuition for yourself and seeing where you're pulled. A lot of people struggle with their niche and who they serve and how they're gonna serve them. Pay attention to those feelings you have about clients that you love working with, industries you really enjoy, and also stuff you do that is just a drag and it feels tedious and you can't stand it. Like, why would you build a business around that? Why would you build a business around a service that you don't even enjoy doing or an industry you don't even like supporting? So my challenge for you is to step into your role as the expert that you are you know, overcome imposter syndrome if you feel that. Like, why would anyone work with me? I was an attorney. Why would anybody hire an attorney with no training to run an agency? Well, they did <laughs> because I believed in myself. That was the huge piece of my success was I believed in myself and I still do. And I believe in you too. And I want you to step into your greatness, step into your role as an expert. If you feel imposter syndrome, I want you to reframe it and tell yourself, I'm feeling this way now because I'm stepping into a role that's bigger and I'm serving in a bigger and better way. And anytime you grow, anytime you feel that, there's resistance. It's your self trying to protect yourself because you're doing something new, maybe outside of your comfort zone, but you're growing. And you should feel great about doing that, stepping into a bigger role. So I challenge you be a leader, be the leader of your agency, be a leader in your industry, and you're driving this ship. Build a business that you love.
because you deserve it.